Hi everyone, welcome to the start of a really fun and interesting series of adventures. I am in the great state of Illinois, and this is far from my usual stomping grounds in the West. I've never done any videos in the Midwest before, and I'm excited. One of my goals for the year was to come east of the Rockies, east of the Mississippi River, and film some adventures out here, do some adventures out here. And this particular adventure was made possible by my sister and her family. They've lived in a suburb of Chicago for, I don't know, 15 or 20 years. It's been a long time. So I've been out there to visit them several times. And when I was talking to her recently, she was like, oh, you should come out, you should fly out, and you can take our minivan out on some trips, on some adventures. So that's what I'm doing. I'm in their, I think this is a 2017 Chrysler Pacifica minivan. My plan is to at some point film a tour of my setup in the minivan here and I think that will actually be the first video in this series of videos from this trip. So if you're seeing this video that means that the video tour of this minivan has already gone live on the channel. So you'll probably want to go check that out if you haven't seen it already. I'll put links to it in the comments below and in the description below this video. I'm currently sitting in a large parking lot at Starved Rock State Park, about an hour and a half west or kind of southwest of Chicago. And it's cold and it's been raining all morning. There's just a ton of water here. Um, I don't know how that's going to affect hiking. I think it'll make some of the waterfalls better, so that'll be fun. But uh, it's definitely going to make filming difficult. But anyway, enough talking. Let's go do some hiking. Here's the van, by the way. They lovingly refer to it as Red Rover, so that's what I'll be calling it also in these videos. It's a good looking car. And I think we're gonna start off heading in this direction. Now this is a very famous and popular and well-loved area. I was looking at the Google reviews for this place on Google Maps. It has something like 12,000 reviews and the average review the overall review is 4.7 out of 5 stars, so it's supposed to be pretty pretty awesome. And my brother-in-law really loves this place, he's done all of the trails out here, so he gave me a good, good primer on the best trails out here, and the ones that I should do on my first visit here. And this weather, while certainly not ideal, is, uh, is good for keeping crowds away, I'm guessing, so gotta count our blessings there, I suppose. And so this is the top of Starved Rock itself. This place is called Starved Rock State Park. Named after this rock that I'm currently on top of. Let's go take a look at the view. This is looking out at the Illinois River. Apparently this is prime bald eagle watching country, but I don't see any. That's not. That bird up there is not a bald eagle. Pretty view though. And it's called Starved Rock because of a story, and I think it's just a story. I don't believe there's any hard and fact archeological or documented evidence for this. I think it's partially made up and partially maybe just an oral tradition, but the story goes that basically one Native American tribe trapped another Native American tribe on top of this rock and starved them to death. And that was in retribution for the one tribe having killed one of the leaders of the other tribe. And so, interesting story. Probably didn't happen, but still interesting. The sign back there did say that Native Americans have been in this area for over 10,000 years. So they definitely came here and used this area. Whether or not that story went down here is a matter of debate. And then here's the partially obscured view looking downriver. We have a couple of of islands in the Illinois River here. This area was first explored by French explorers in the late 1600s, and one of them came up the river here, what is now called the Illinois River. He met a Native American tribe who were called the Illinois or Illinois, and the French version of that became the word Illinois. Yeah, crowds here for the first main hike of the day. 
not going to be an issue. This is a map of the area, a map of Starved Rock State Park, which is basically this along the southern side of the river here. I was over here before Starved Rock itself is right there. Then I drove on this road to this point. From here I'm going to hike, I'm going to do a loop here, go see these two canyons. So there are a lot of little canyons in this park. That's what this area is known for. You can see the names of all of these canyons here, all along here. There are lots of them. We're gonna start with exploring these right here. La Salle and Tonti Canyons. What a spectacular place. And I'm the only one out here. Just amazing. I think it's just called the Sal Canyon Falls. I haven't made it to Taunty Canyon yet. I think that one is just kind of around the corner here. Wow, and I am the only car at this next trailhead. That's great. So this little hike, this trail goes to these, the first three spots here. This is what I'll be visiting. Castle Overhang, Ottawa Canyon, and I don't know how to say this word, Kaskaskia, maybe, Canyon? I know that Kaskaskia is a name that's applied to a wide variety of things in this part of the country. I think it was a Native American tribe. That's where the name came from and there's like a fort and there's at least one or two towns with that name. So I've read that name a lot, but I've never heard it. I assume it's Kaskaskia. If it's not, let me know. And this, just a few minutes from the parking lot, is Council Overhang. It's a big cave in the sandstone. I love how the opening of the cave from the back here is just a perfect half circle. It's very satisfying to look at. And this place is called Council Overhang because Native American tribes used to meet here together, used to council here together. And I can see why, I mean, it's just a perfect spot, perfectly sheltered. We are at a fork in the trail. I think to the left is Kaskaskia Canyon and to the right is Ottawa Canyon. This one is shorter and I can see a waterfall back in there. Let's go check out this side first. Wow. Just a little jungle paradise here. That's what it feels like. That's amazing. I think I can get over there by crossing the creek on this bridge and then let's go around the back. My feet are already wet, so I don't know why I'm bothering, but you see a little log bridge, you gotta take it. You know, one of the great pleasures in life is walking behind waterfalls.
And here's what's at the back end of Kaskaskia Canyon. A smaller waterfall, maybe 10 or 15 feet high. Not quite as spectacular as the others, but still really pretty. And this area in general, like this little canyon, is really pretty. I'm on the far eastern side of the park now, and once I get back to the car, I'm going to drive to the far western side of the park to see the last thing in the park on my list today before I hit the road again. Getting back into crowded territory now, there's exactly one other car in the parking lot. I think the trail follows this road for a while. This one is called St. Louis Canyon, and I believe it's one of the deeper canyons in the park, and the waterfall is one of the highest in the park. And here she is, this is St. Louis Falls. Took about 15 minutes to hike here. Not too bad at all. So I had pretty high expectations when it came to Starved Rock State Park. I'd heard and read a lot of really great things about it. And those expectations were met and then surpassed a little bit. This is a really pretty place. It would be a, a pretty place to visit even when there's no water running in the waterfalls, but with water like this running in the waterfalls, it's fantastic, I love it. Had a great time here. Not entirely sure what my next destination is gonna be yet, but I'll let you know once I get there. All right, a couple hours later, we are in Springfield, Illinois, the capital of Illinois. This is the tomb of Abraham Lincoln. There are several statues of Lincoln in here, along with a couple of paragraphs of text on the wall talking about his life. And then this is the tomb itself. His remains are in concrete 10 feet down underneath the, this big granite marker here. The flags on the left here are the states that Lincoln's ancestors lived in. Massachusetts, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. And flags on the right are the states that the president lived in. Kentucky, Indiana, and Illinois. And then back on the outside here, there's this statue. And uh, people rub his nose for good luck. That's why it's all shiny. And in that central area inside the tomb where there was the, the granite headstone, the wall behind me there as I was standing there, that's the chamber where his wife and, their, and three of their sons are located. They're also buried in there. And then just down the hill from the main tomb is this. This was Lincoln's temporary tomb. His remains were here for about seven months in 1865. And then they were moved up into a, another temporary tomb kind of halfway up the hillside, where they remained until 1874, when this was completed. Lincoln was born in Kentucky, but he's more closely associated with Illinois, of course, the land of Lincoln. He lived here as a lawyer before he became a politician, and you can still go see and visit his law offices in town, I think, here. And then also his house is here in Springfield if you want to visit that. Unfortunately, I don't have time for those today. Uh, the days are short this time of year. It'll be dark in couple of hours, I still need to have dinner and then go drive to a campsite, which is not especially close to town here. And that's one thing that I wanted to, to talk about a little bit or to, to mention briefly anyway. My goal is never to see everything, it's just to see the things that I have time to see and enjoy them and not worry about what I didn't have time to see or what I didn't know about or whatever.
That drone footage you just saw is of this surprisingly beautiful free campsite right on the edge of a beautiful lake. This is Waverly Lake, also called Waverly City Lake. It's outside of a little town called Waverly. I'm at the tail end of the lake. There's a, a dam right here that I'm right next to. I'm also right next to some train tracks. So there are train tracks just right over here. A couple trains have passed already. I think there are six or eight free campsites in this little campground at the lake here. I believe this is city-owned property and they allow camping here, which is pretty great. And this particular campsite is one of the closer ones to the train tracks over there. It's not going to bother me too much because I sleep with earplugs, although I'll still probably be able to hear it, but oh well. If you were to come here, you'd probably want to get one of the campsites a little bit further away from the train tracks, but I liked this spot. Got some window screens on the front windows. These are cracked about three inches right here. It shouldn't rain tonight. The forecast does not call for rain, so I'm fine with keeping these windows cracked and some screens over them to keep the bugs out. Press this little button here. The doors magically slide open. And here we have our spacious accommodations for the night, for the week. This feels really nice in here. It feels really cozy. It's spacious. I mean, there's way more room in here than my RAV4. Even more room than my Yukon. You know, the Yukon is a big SUV, but even a small minivan is going to be more roomy than a big SUV. It's going to be a good night. It's going to be a good trip. I've already made one modification. I moved my bed back this way more so that my pillows and my head would be up against the, the rear door here so I can like sit up in bed. And the tour video of this setup that I keep talking about, again, that'll be filmed at the end of the week. So that'll be the, the perfected version of this setup. And so in the meantime, I'm just going to have fun customizing it. Oh, and by the way, I had a, uh, a falafel wrap thing, a falafel gyro basically in Springfield. And that was really good. And then I got an Oreo shake from Steak and Shake. So I'm happy. I'm full. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I think I'm going to plan and relax for the rest of the night. But yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite part was. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what your experiences have been like in this part of the country. And leave a comment below where you think I'm going to go next. Where do you think I'm going to go tomorrow on this trip? I'd be interested in reading those comments. So thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.